Polymerase chain reaction, or PCR, is a powerful lab technique used to generate billions of copies of a specific stretch of DNA. For example, one application of PCR is the detection of the coronavirus genome in human cells as a diagnostic test. To understand the mechanism of PCR, let's begin by listing the necessary materials. First, we need a DNA template, which is a stretch of double-stranded DNA containing the region we want to amplify. Second, we need the building blocks of DNA. The four deoxyribonucleotides, DATP, DCTP, DGTP, and DTTP. Together, the four are called DNTPs. A PCR reaction contains a large excess of DNTPs compared to the amount of the DNA template. Third, we need a special polymerase that synthesizes DNA called TAC. TAC is unique because it can function at high temperatures. Finally, we need to add a set of primers. Primers are short pieces of single-stranded DNA that are complementary to the ends of the DNA region that we want to amplify. All these reactants are combined into a test tube in PCR buffer. One PCR cycle consists of three steps, denaturation, annealing, and elongation. This cycle will be repeated again and again to create a huge number of copies of the same specific DNA segment. Let's look at the first PCR cycle. Step one, denaturation. The test tube is heated to 95 degrees Celsius. At this temperature, the double-stranded DNA template dissociates into two single strands. The annealing step allows the primers to bind to their complementary regions on the single-stranded DNA templates. During the annealing step, the test tube is cooled to a temperature of about 45 to 70 degrees Celsius, depending on the sequence of the primers. The short primers base pair to the template with great specificity so that two template primer complexes are formed. Primers are supplied in great excess and will not be depleted during the PCR reaction. Lastly, during elongation, the temperature is raised to 72 degrees Celsius, which is the ideal working temperature for TAC polymerase. The polymerase uses the annealed primers as the starting point for DNA synthesis. Each primer is extended along its DNA template by addition of DNTPs in the 5' prime to 3' prime direction until the end of the DNA template. The result of the first PCR cycle is a double-stranded copy of the region of interest, along with a remaining stretch of DNA past the region of interest, which are called the overhang products. To successfully amplify the region of interest without these overhang products, we need to repeat the PCR cycle at least twice. For the second cycle, we have to go through denaturation, annealing, and elongation again. This time, both the original strands and the newly made copies are used as templates. The result of the second cycle is four pieces of double-stranded DNA. Two of these are the desired products of the correct length. The remaining two again contain overhang products. Third cycle. These four different PCR products provide eight templates for cycle three. After going through the PCR cycle a third time, we end up with eight double-stranded PCR products. Two of them finally exactly match the double-stranded DNA segment as we wanted to amplify. In the following cycles of PCR, we will enrich this final product exponentially. Typically, a PCR protocol will repeat about 30 cycles of denaturation, annealing, and elongation. As a result, the DNA region of interest will be much more abundant than the unwanted overhang products and the initial template of the first PCR cycles. 30 cycles of PCR produce over 1 billion copies of the amplified region, compared to only a few overhang products. You can visualize the final amplified PCR product with DNA gel electrophoresis. 
If the PCR reaction was successful, the PCR product appears as a single band in a DNA gel.